I'm a few minutes late. Again. Uh, took a moment getting everything set up. My phone did not charge. That's fantastic. <laughs> but I still got it here with me to keep an eye on chat as we progress through the evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Moby is why here. Time of recording this uh, Friday, June 11th. So tonight, as you can see, we're back at Stellaris Console Edition. Jumping into our Not a Scientology Cult. This is our Mega Church. This is our Mega Church stream game, and uh, we're going to continue this particular playthrough. This will actually be the last stream uh, featuring this Empire for two reasons. One, I expect this to be the last time that I can stream uh, on a Stellaris night for a little while here. I'm hoping it's only like you know another week or two tops perhaps, but, uh, you know, stay tuned. I'll keep you updated. If I can do a launch stream on ooh, excuse me, Thursday the 17th. I just ate not too long ago, so it's giving me the belchies. Uh, Thursday the 17th is when Federations comes out. If I can do a launch stream that evening, I told him to go as well. You can bet your beautiful booties that I absolutely will. Um, so yeah. Barring anything else going on, uh, you know, this will be the this will be the last stream because of the new DLC coming out, uh, and and at the same time a new update coming that day. Uh, which, whenever that happens, it's always recommended by those at Paradox and myself even that you simply just start a new game uh, because you're far more likely to run into interesting and quirky bugs if you don't, or I should say just issues. Like for I can remember. When Megacore came out last year, I still had to take, uh, in one of my old save files, I had to take Mega Engineering a second time in order to, uh, in order to uh, actually get access to the, um, the what's it called? The, the, the Mega Structures, those damn things. Why can't I see chat when I turn this sideways? That's extremely stupid. Always disliked that. Okay. Oh, there it is. JB Semper Buffo, what's up, guys? Thanks for coming. Is my phone still charging? I hope it is. Yes, it is. Okay, good. So, yeah, for some reason, I think I just need a new cable, but yeah, for some reason, it really buggered up and didn't charge up to 100% and leave me not worrying about whether or not I'd have enough battery power for the evening. But we're good now. So, yeah. Um, those of you watching this in the future on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the video, do give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below to uh, help me with the algorithm. And uh, subscribe to the channel for more Stellaris Console Edition content. The goal for 2021 is to try to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of December. It's a pretty tall order, but I think we can do it together. The best things you can do to help out are, of course, subscribe yourself and share this content with anybody who you think would enjoy watching. Um, there's also links down in the description below. Uh, be sure to check them out. You'll find one for the official Stellaris Discord channel where you can become part of the greater Stellaris community. And there's also links to my own personal stuff. For example, my Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Give me a follow there. Pop on by Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. That is my normal schedule. Um, four days a week, 7 o'clock Mountain Time. It would be awesome to have you here during the live streams. Elk, what's up, buddy? So you can join cool people like JB, Semper Buffo, Elk, uh, Runicat, Razor, a bunch of others. It would be fantastic to have you there for the live streams. I do stream more than just Solaris Console Edition, so hopefully I'll see you there. There's also links to my Twitter feed and my dis personal Discord channel, excuse me, personal Discord server, I guess I could say, uh, where you can keep in touch with me, and I post important announcements there all the time. So to stay tuned on what's going on with the schedule, uh, give me a follow on Twitter or join us in the Discord. We're actually really close to 200 members in the Discord, so it's been uh, growing fairly steadily. Uh, all this year, for the first half of this year, and it's cool to see continue. Um, so yeah. Anyways, let's get into the game. Uh, what are we going to do here? We're kind of just continuing to build up our economy, not... We are legion, says JB. Okay. Kind of not really doing anything too crazy. We could probably build up enough alloys to do the next section of uh, uh, the ring world here in Cybrex Alpha. How are we doing on Volatile Moats? We've got plus 18. Oh, okay. So we can definitely add another Foundry Arcology to make some more metallurgist jobs. The problem is getting pops to work them. Uh, so we got a Ministry of Production uh, being constructed here 
on uh, Frogman subpar supplies. This gives us 15% more output for metallurgists and artisans, especially those metallurgists, uh, which is super duper important. Dust caverns. We got we got a max mode harvesting trap. Cool. We're cool there. All right, semper buffos, energy, something, something. Um, we've got uh, we've got an alloy foundry being constructed there to deal with the unemployment of a specialist, and then Payne's Pleasure Palace. What are we doing here? We have some unemployment for some reason, and I still don't understand why, because we have available jobs. But you know what? It's all good. Um, so yeah, I think I don't. Uh, I'm I'm a little disappointed to say, but I don't think this is going to be a terribly special stream because we've really been locked into this portion of our space for pretty much the entire game. So I don't think there's going to be a big shebang to finish off this particular uh, stream game. Um, I would I would figure that I would need more time for that, maybe another 50 in-game years or so. So that could be like another two three streams. Um, but I'm going to try to get something going here. Uh, you know what I can do is I can definitely... Uh, we've got Titan Assembly Yards and a resource silo on the way. I can definitely build up some ships, and we can try to take out this Marauder Empire over here that has been right next to us for the entire game. I could also go after the Grey Tempest, but eh, I'm a little adamant to do that. So our forward defense fleet right now only has 30 cruisers. And it has a 22.4k fleet power rating. What is happening over here? Are these Tianki space whales in their st in their space? Uh, I think it is. Uh, oh no, it's a raiding fleet. Okay, that's what it is. Uh, curious. Most curious. Um, anyways, we're getting uh, we're getting lots concluded. of refugees showing up. Research concluded. Fleet management procedures. Very good. Uh, so since we're going to get uh, fleet stuff. Let's go ahead and just keep doing fleet management procedures to increase our uh, naval capacity by small increments at a time. And uh, ooh, the resolution has passed minor research sanctions. All right. Are we in breach of galactic law? No, we're not. So we're good. Some other people are, but whatever. We don't care about them. All right. Let's take a look at our battleships in completed. Fleet Designer. Uh... I could construct a Titan, but it'll just take too bloody long for it to finish. Um, we're on talk station. Okay, so we've got uh, an upgrade to that starbase. It's got some more defenses on it. That'll come in handy. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, Sue Elks Miners Conglomerate. Okay. See, what we can do here is uh, declare, declare population controls no population growth on the planet. That lowers stability by five, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's, it's okay. It could be useful. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to use this. Uh, we're going to use uh, Elks Miners Conglomerate. We're going to resettle some pops. And we're going to resettle them to Frogman Subpar Supplies because they will take up open metallurgist jobs by doing that. So we can probably do a couple robotic servants. And, uh, ooh, best if we pause the game, maybe. Oh, that's right. We can only do it like one at a time. Uh, otherwise, we lose the building slot. That's a good point. I forgot about that. We don't want to lose the building slot. No, 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 no. Um... What else can we do here? Day's Doll Dealership. Got some stuff going on here. Admin Park. Yeah, our admin cap is looking okay for now. Um, boy, it's pretty crazy. I. Uh, it's very uncommon where a third of my colonies are habitats. We only have 11... It says 11 planets, but it's really colonies. And out of that many, four of them are habitats, which... Is a fair bit. That's that's norm that's uncommon in my usual Iron Man games, but that's okay. We were restricted to this very tiny area of space, so make the most of it. Habitats come in very handy for that. Uh, uh, what is Carbon World? Plus fifteen percent minerals from jobs, but is this thing a terraforming candidate? No. So what does that ma what does that modifier matter? 
wonder if that applies to when you create a habitat in orbit. Probably. We could find out. Why don't we go ahead and do that? We even have a construction ship right here. Down to six. All right, that's cool. And we can go ahead and build a habitat. There we go. It is on the way. Oh, of course, uh, that did use up a lot of our uh, alloys. But right now, it's pretty damn cheap to buy alloys. So we're going to do that a couple times. There we go. And now we have more than enough to do the next section of the ring world. Sell a bit of food, and we'll sell a bit of minerals as well, because we don't really need those. And let's go back to Cyberx Alpha, and we are going to do this ring world section. Beautiful. Why do we have more of our pops on the slave market? What's happening? That's just not cool. Alright, um... We're seeing some unemployment on Ender. Do we have housing and amenities? 32 housing, 63 amenities. So we can totally upgrade some of those research complexes uh, to create more jobs. However, we only have plus two exotic gases. That's a problem. So I can still upgrade one of these for now until we get more exotic gas refineries. Well, we can add one here at Payne's Pleasure Palace. First, let's start with the city district just to add a bunch of clerks. And then we'll do a gas refinery. That'll come in handy. Uh, Elks Miners Conglomerate. We're going to resettle another pop from here. Uh, Frogman Subpar Supply. Uh, subpar Supplies, yes. Um, okay. So we're going to resettle this person. And I do believe that they will be replaced. All right. And Day's Doll Dealership. Not much I can do here yet. Uh, we have 32 pops. We need three more to get this next building slot. Ugh. This might, this one might be tough to get up to a decent amount. I could do a Hyper Entertainment Forums, but that costs gases each month, and I, I don't want to do that just yet. Um, could definitely upgrade the Algaloid Mega Forge, though. Let's do that. That'll give us uh, three jobs. So, that one, so that'll be pops number 32, 33, and 34 with jobs. And there's enough housing and amenities for them as well. And then uh, pop number 35 will unlock this building slot. And honestly, we could probably just stick an exotic gas refinery and then leave it at that. And then only have 35 pops on this habitat. That will work out. The more I've been playing the last little while, the more I've been using habitats, and the more I've been realizing that... You don't need, and you probably don't want, a heck of a lot of pops on your habitats. At least that's just... That is the conclusion that I have been arriving at. I should, I guess I should specify uh, in that manner. Uh, industrial Arcology is right. I never actually Research did take a good concluded. look at these Arcology... Um, these little arcology photos. I wish they, there was like a much bigger one that could be blown up and that I could use for thumbnails or something. They look interesting. But, uh, yeah, it's really tough to uh, upscale pictures that are really small like that. You make them huge and then they just wind up looking like garbage. Okay, so... Uh, with the next section of the ring world going on, we have more than enough alloys to continue building some fleet. We can add some battleships to these cruisers that we got. What is our cruiser design, is my question. Uh, broadside bow, broadside core. Eh, blah, 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 blah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, ooh, the missile bow on the humanoids looks pretty cool. Broadside bow, and what about artillery bow? Okay, that looks pretty neat. I like that. I like it, I like it a lot. Um, alright, so I think what we're, I'm going to try here is missile core? No, we're going to do a hangar core, and we will do a missile bow. I like the hangar core because it's got that little bridge tower in the middle of it. I think that's cool. That's just me. Advanced strike craft, we're going to do a guardian point defense and flak artillery because, uh, maybe we should just stick with point defense because pirates use, um missiles and then we can also do 
Uh, phase disruptors. Yeah, let's just go. You know what? Let's do. Yeah, let's do phase disruptors just for fun. And then we'll leave a broadside stern phase disruptor. There we go. And what else? Regenerative hull tissue. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's do artillery combat computers. Tachyon sensors, impulse thrusters, hyperdrive three. We'll leave it zero point power for now. And then we can also do. Uh, let's do a shield capacitor and regenerative hull tissue. Uh, that way we can add some hyper shields and some durasteel armor, but mostly uh, crystal infused plating. I don't think we have a lot of crystals, though, is the, kind of the problem. But this will be interesting. Actually, let's just add more durasteel armor, right? This is a really goofy kind of setup, in my opinion, but it's okay. Ooh, 0.9 exotic gases for that. That's okay. So let's go ahead and save that design. And how much will it cost to upgrade? Uh, ooh, minus 60 crystals. Oh, that's right, because we had them outfitted with a bajillion lasers, so I shouldn't be worried about the cost of crystals. Uh, yeah, let's make it let's make it cheaper. Cheaper on alloys. There we go. That'll work. Okay, now our battleships. Uh, we're going to go ahead... Ooh, actually, hang on. I just realized... How much power do we have? Antimatter reactor, cold fusion reactor, antimatter reactor, zero point... Uh, it's only saving about 20 alloys, but that's okay. Let's do it. And the battleship... Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to stick with a spinal mount bow. We'll give it the focused arc emitter because we're using uh, uh, blah, 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 phase disruptors. And then we'll go with a carrier core. Because that's what the cool people use. And this gives us two small slots, so we'll throw on phase disruptors. And then we'll do guardian point defense and flak artillery. Yeah, no, never mind. Let's just stick with guardian point defense. Two things of strike craft. And we'll leave it to artillery stern. And we cannot do a phase disruptor, so... I kind of forgot about that. Broadside stern. And we'll throw on two phase disruptors. Like so. Shield capacitor. Regenerative hull tissue. We'll do uh, two hyper shields. Two durasteel armor. Two uh, crystal infused plating. Crystal forged plating. Crystal infused plating. And then changing from this to this. That drops it by about 40. Um, 40 alloys. That's pretty good. And then we're going to stick with the artillery computer. And this looks okay. Kind of a strange setup, but uh, I will take it. And you can see the hangar bay is on the sides of the battleship now uh, in the core. And it's got the little fighter control tower kind of thingy there as well. Looks pretty cool. I like this setup. Human the humanoid shits are just extremely visually appealing, um, in my opinion. Largely because, I, you know, I think they were designed to be appearing... Uh, to be a visually appealing to us human eyeballs. All right, uh, so blah, 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 blah. let's go ahead and upgrade. We're going to upgrade these ships first. Bloop. There they go. And that is going to take... Is it really going to take a billion years? No. No way. Construction completed. It is. All right. That's too bad. Uh, San Opel Station. Let's do a bunch of hangar bays. And, ooh. Situation log has been they updated. Want a, another Daphnak relocation thingy? Alright, now this is going to be a trade hub. So, let's go ahead and do an off-world trading company here. And what else did we have on our trade hubs? I can't remember. Uh, da, 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 da. We got an Artful Trade Company, Hyperlane Registrar, and Resource Silos. Obviously, I should have known that. Uh, now, where is it? Hyperlane Registrar and Resource Silos are near the top. There we go. That'll do. No defenses as of yet. Now, this Bastion. Are we just doing Bastion things? Communications Jammer, Disruption Field Generator, and Target Uplink Computer. Of course. Um... So let's leave the hangar bays alone, and then we go down here. Communications jammer, disruption field generator, and target uplink computer. And there we go. Ready to rock and roll. You know, the, the time in this game goes significantly slower than my current Iron Man game. And my current Iron Man game, I'm like 150 years of this game. But I think it has 
it definitely has something to do with the fact that it's, it's not a big galaxy. It just played a small galaxy of AI empires that I've already worked out. And now the only other AIs were originally like my vassals that I up. They were primitives that I uplifted, made them my vassals, and I looked after them. And then I released them and I'm trying to like form federations with them and stuff like that now. So it's like there's only about five of them and they only have one system under their control. So uh, the timer just goes zoom, zoom in that particular game. Um, we are supposed to see Research some under-the-hood performance improvements with the uh, 2.8.1 update that is coming on the same day as the Federation's DLC, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, ooh. In Breach of Galactic Law, Military Readiness Act. Oh, that's right. Uh, that are using less than half of their naval capacity. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I get it now. Uh, how much more upgrading do you have to do? Oh, a bunch. Yikes. Pretty much the entire fleet still. Oops. Okay, so uh, what happens now that we're in breach of the galactic law? Diplomatic weight from fleet. Blah, 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 blah. Um, let me check. we got to go to galactic community, I think. And then go to resolutions. And which one is it? Military sanctions. Uh, minus 10% naval, naval capacity and minus 20% diplomatic weight from fleet power. Is that how it's going? I can't tell. I think so. But my fleet, uh, blah, blah, blah. my diplomatic weight has gone down a little bit, so. Darth Nibor, okay, what's up? Yeah, I made it to a stream. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Matt Morals, can't wait. F can't wait. Oh my god. Matt Morals, can't wait for. <laughs> Good old. Autocorrect. So, uh, Matt Morrill's meant to say, can't wait for necroids, but the autocorrect changed the C from a G. <laughs> uh, my body is ready for necroids. Yeah. Darth Niebork says, hell yeah. Necroids will be uh, pretty cool because it's another, it's another species pack that brings additional mechanics behind them. Similar to uh, Machine Empires with Synthetic Dawn, uh, Lithoids, and uh, actually that's about it. I'm excited to see actually what the development team at Paradox does to bring new interesting gameplay mechanics to um, the Plantoids and Humanoids uh, species packs in a future update because we will get that like... Eventually. Um, it should be pretty cool. Um, Alright. Uh, where? Days Doll Dealership. Still experiencing. Why aren't you working there? Come on. Get your head out of your ass! And new ships. That's, all, that's also very true. And... Plantoids and humanoids revision is going to be pog. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what we're, what we're going to see, what they're going to make of it. They look pretty nice from what I've seen. The necroid ships? Honestly, uh, in my opinion, the necroid ships are kind of like, they look extremely similar to humanoid ships, just with more spikes. That's my, that's my hot take on them. Still, new ship sets are cool because more, um, you know, it's nice having that additional customization. I always like that. In these kind of games. They fit my Sith Lord aesthetic? Eh, that's fair. That makes sense. Alright, um... 16,000 to buy some alloys. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, now, how much to add? Let's try and add about 10 battleships. Add ship design to fleet. Battleship. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's just gonna take a minute, probably. Especially now that the month has rolled over. Uh -huh. Oh, the fleet command limit has been reached. Oops. I done gone, forgot about that. So you know what? We're gonna We're gonna do ten battleships in a new fleet. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. Duh. Uh battleship. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. And this will cost Ooh. That's cheap. Really? I thought our battleships would cost way more than that, but, you know, whatever. 
we can currently reinforce six ships. Okay, never mind. We need 11,000 alloys. Duh. And 32 exotic gases and 63 crystal. I think we got that covered. No problem. Okay. So, Day's Doll dealership. Uh, we really need more exotic gases. So, you get an exotic gas refinery. And that's it. We need to... I'm going to rename this. And I'm going to keep it named Day's Doll dealership. But... Instead, we put an asterisk on the asterisk on the front of it, or I do, to indicate that okay, I'm done with this planet. I don't want any more population growth. So, if I see like we we still have 13 housing, so we could uh, we could allow more pops to live on this habitat. I'm going to change that though. I'm going to change this to from a habitation district to an astral mining bay. So that will drop the housing down to about five, I think. And, uh, oh no, never mind. It'll drop it down to eight, I do believe. Um, so you know what? I could probably replace that with two more Astro Mining Bays. Let's do that. Okay, so if I replace it, if I swap in two more Astro Mining Bays, that's three more minor jobs, or sorry, six more minor jobs. Uh, and we'll, we will unlock a building slot in that instance. And that seventh pop from that, we should have about 42 pops. I could just put another... Uh, I don't want more pops than that because we won't have the housing. Uh, the housing should work out to exactly... to having... we'll either have like exactly zero at 42 pops or we'll have one housing left. And I'm just going to put another refinery in this uh, next building slot. And I'll leave it at that. But, but we love it here. <laughs> yeah. Especially with Nemesis, Sith Lord, re Roleplay, Engage. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, what's this one? Voting to enact resolution. Natural sanctuaries. Diplomatic weight from economy. This is terrible. Who the hell is... I'm opposing this. Clear blocker time. Pop, pop amenities usage is decreased. And pla planet build speed is also decreased. Pop consumer goods upkeep is also decreased. I don't really like this one, though. It makes me annoyed. But it's probably going to pass, because two of, two of the big three, as I'm calling them for now, plus the Kroll Confederacy, which has a lot of diplomatic weight as well. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what happens. Unless one of these folks, one of these AI empires, switches from supporting this to opposing it, we're kind of SOL. It's going to pass. Uh, okay, we need a little bit more energy credits. Go ahead and sell that. Buy more alloys. Hells yeah. And uh, now we need Professor Payne. What's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Thanks for popping in on a Friday here. Appreciate you coming by to let me entertain you. We refine your gases exotically. Yes. Yes, we do. Bring forth... <laughs> Bring forth the Twilight Dancers. <laughs> okay. Uh... So yeah, I'm just going to build up a fleet and then we're going to attack this uh, Marauder faction over here and we'll just leave it at that. That will be the end. It's going to take me a while to do that though. Oh yeah, we're still synthetically ascending too. That's going to take a long time. Uh, 74 months. Oh boy. Yikes. That's... Ew. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Fetch me my... Fetch me my white pants. Why do you need pants? <laughs> a very good question. One that should be asked numerous times. All right. So we get some more metallurgists filling in those slots. Yeah, we're running, we're running out of minerals here. I'm going to have to... Ooh, you know what? Um, edicts. Oh, we already have production targets up and running. Ugh. Well, that's not a good sign. What about Omnifarious Acquisition? Upgrades uh, no, it is not. Cool. Alright, so we've got our forward defense fleet has been upgraded. Oh man, they jumped up to 34,000 fleet power just from those upgrades. That's pretty cool. Okay, so one fleet needs to be reinforced with 10 ships. Uh, we're just shy of the necessary amount. We need uh, 11,000 alloys, and we'll get that in just a moment. I'm going to sell some volatile moats. And I need 30,000. Damn. Okay. 
Uh, is there something else I can sell? See, whenever, whenever I do that, when I pause and I go, eh, it just rem it reminds me of that meme video of Mass Effect that I shared in my Discord that I'm quite positive nobody watched. <laughs> it's where Tal, it's where Garrus and Tally get into an argument, and there's there's a about a half a minute there where Garrus just goes, uh. I thought it was funny. It's, it's funny when you see the video up, and obviously, yeah, sure. Whatever. Alright, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we'll actually, well, see this big little juggernaut ship icon? We get juggernauts next week. Curator station destroyed. Uh, the forces from the Grey Tempest were behind this attack. That's too bad. Oh my god, look at all those strike craft. <laughs> Um, anyways, yeah, uh, the hell else, what was I talking about? You need to set Payne's Pleasure Palace. <laughs> Promise? Research concluded. <laughs> Do you welcome Sith? Me? Uh, eh. Take him or leave him. Um, okay, please tell me that I actually started constructing those battleships. I did, good. Alright, we're gonna need another admiral for the battleship fleet. So let's go ahead. Ooh, cautious. This will be perfect. Boom. Increase the range of those focused argumenters. And everybody is set to artillery as well, so that's pretty cool. Eh, I'm a little skeptical about only having 10 battleships, though. Doesn't seem like it'll be enough. I would like to up it to 15. If we get enough... Uh, if we get enough alloys, we can do that. Do you have a holocron I could study? No, I do not. All are welcome. No kink shaming. <laughs> Gonna bring all my amputee friends. Good, good. I'll let the hate flow free. Place will be crawling with pussy. <laughs> uh. See, JB. The problem with that is, like me, you don't have friends. Sorry, man. Hate to break it to you, buddy, but uh, somebody's gotta, somebody's gotta take you out of the knees and get you back on. Uh, Get you back to your reality. <laughs> Snap back to reality. Oh, here comes gravity. Some other lyrics I don't know, because stuff. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and do... Do we have food processing facilities? Let's drop those food processing facilities. We're also going to do hydroponics farms here. <laughs> Not my spaghetti. Yo. If you had one shot to have mom spaghetti, <laughs> would you take it or would you let it slip away? <laughs> his arms go spaghetti. He opens his mouth, but spaghetti won't come out. The crowd goes spaghetti. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is so old school. Mom spaghetti. Why did we get a commercial segment? I should have done a research segment. Stirrope 2, habitat complete. Excellent. I don't have the uh, gases, I guess. Maybe it's just the minerals. I don't know. Uh, anyways. Do, 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 Hollow theaters. That's a great video. Oh, yeah, dude. Super duper old school, but it's amazing. Straight up amazing. Why is this guy down here not working an artisan job? What the hell? Okay, whatever. You do you. Um, let's go ahead and encourage planetary growth and distribute luxury goods on that ring world. Oh, yeah. Our minerals are down to fuck all per month. These are like... These, this is like the amount of minerals being generated every month when you're like five years into the game. This is terrible. All right, let's colonize. 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 With the super non-lizard people. Why can I colonize with so many different non-lizard people? Humans. Ooh, let's colonize with humans. Um, what do we call in this one? Uh, JB's... What, uh, who needs friends when you have 
his sis to devour your enemies. Okay. Um, what are we going to call this place? JB, do we have a colony name? Do we have a colony named after you yet? I don't think so. Mickey B, Royal Duke Jam, Elk, um, Professor Payne, Runicant, Joe the Frogman, Semper Buffo, Days, Thor's Hammer. That's for Strength Norse and Razors. No, we don't. Okay. Guess what, JB? We get to name this after whatever the hell you want. What do you want your habitat to be named? JB's House of Naughty Things. Probably not. It's also known as a Sith Dragon. Fair enough. Uh... JB's what's it going to be for? Uh, well, minerals for one and then we're probably, I think I'm going to do some research labs on it, maybe. There'll be a few refineries, but I'd like to get a couple research labs on it. There won't be very many because like I said it will have only about like 50 pops perhaps. Maybe less because I might do like six astro mining districts and only two habitation districts for housing. So let me know. What do you want me to be? J JB's, JB's, JB something. Something, something, something dark side. He done gone got to come up with, comes up, comes up with the names is, is. Bro, tell you what, you think on it, let me know in chat when you've got it figured out and then we'll colonize this bad boy. The sooner the better it would be great because our minerals are going in the freaking toilet right now. And I would very much like that resolved. That's my passive aggressive way. I'm telling you to hurry the fuck up. <laughs> JB's Rock Packers. Uh, Alright. We can do that. And colonized by humans initially. JB's... Oops. JB's Rock Pack... Rock Packers. JB's Euphoric Extractors. <laughs> All right. There we go. Governing ethics shift in the nation of Quepta. Oh, that's not cool. They're more xenophobic now. That's too bad. It might have something to do with the Grey Tempest bombing their capital world right now. That's just my guess. These nanite ships look super cool. I do like that the Grey Tempest ships are like 100% unique. Same with Fallen Empire ships. Like I've I've seen it in um, forum posts and stuff like that, and you know you, you name it. I've I've seen it in some areas where it's like, oh, okay, they want a research agreement. Fair enough. Um, anyways, let's just say I've seen it online where people are like, hey, I want to be able to use Great Tempest as a ship set, or I want to be able to use Fallen Empires as a ship set and shit like that. And it's like, why? <laughs> what for? I mean, sure, they look cool now, but the Great Tempest in particular, they, it's, there's, it, <laughs> they would have to redesign the whole damn thing because... There's only two ships, and like they're hard locked into that thing. They they haven't decided what the different little segments will look like, um, depending on the kind of components that you want to put on it, like a hangar core compared to an artillery core, that kind of stuff. They're like they're not interchangeable, you know. I am not naming it Futbuckers Inc. As funny as that is, we're not doing that. <laughs> I wish we could nuke them. It's cool, man. Um, do, 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 do. How are we doing on our battleship construction anyway? The last little batch. And how, what is it rated for? I'm curious. Strate battleship Strategic Readiness Fleet. Cruiser Forward Defense Fleet. Okay. Uh, currently rated at 31,000 fleet power. It's pretty cool. For 10 battleships? Research yeah, that's not concluded. Bad. Research concluded. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll do a little bit of flash coolant. For no reason. How come? <laughs> I mean, it's a good name. I don't disagree. It's a good name. Ugh. Only would like a machine ship set. Yeah, me too. 
That, uh... That person was working on a mod for that machine ship, ship set. Uh... Aaron is all I remember. But anyways, yeah, she her mod looked really cool, but last I checked that out was, Christ, how long ago? Like, before A-Spec released uh, a little video about it. If you, if you go look on YouTube right now for A-Spec Machine Ships mod or something like that, it'll show you the release time of when that video came out, and it was, like, a few months prior to that that I last looked at uh, how that person was doing with the machine ship set, because she was posting in... Uh, in one, in one of the uh, Stellaris discords on progress, like very, very frequently, and I was and I was just checking it out because I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, didn't really. Um, this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but I didn't really care for it all that much because it's a PC mod. But nonetheless, I looked at it and I was like, yeah, looks cool. Neato. <laughs> All right, how much longer for our synthetic evolution? We got five years to go. I don't even know if we're gonna make it at the end of the before the end of the stream because time is going so slow. Um, all right, how are we doing on the Cheleb station? Uh, trade value coming in yet? Yeah, yeah some. No problem. Uh, I'm genuinely curious now. Ooh, what's happening here? Okay, so we're... Oh, see? Somebody switched over. They switched from uh, supporting this resolution to opposing it. Can we call in favors? No. Damn it. So somebody was abstaining, but then they went back to supporting, and now this is going to pass. That sucks. All right, no problem. Uh, we're in three wars right now. Because, of course, we are. <laughs> uh, what the hell was... Uh, damn, what was I going to do? I was going to do something, and then I forget. Now I forget what the hell it was. Uh, Sin Nation has completed construction of their gateway in the Kazoo system. Zapadraga and Enlightened Kingdom has completed construction of their gateway in the system system. The place. All right. Yeah. Monthly influence. Cyborg. Energy credits from jobs. Explorer. Science ship. None of these are terribly great. More like ship weapons damage, army damage, blah, 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 blah. Xenophile. Ethics attraction. Plus 10%. Secure the borders from the ranks. Oh, okay. Logistic understanding. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. Grow economy plus cyborg. Eh, actually, the cyborg stuff doesn't really matter. Yeah, fuck it. We'll just... You can stay in power for another goodness knows how long. You know what? It's fine. Chairwoman Tuprevart Vagris. No problem. Ah, oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, I hope... Uh, hope folks are set for the weekend. And that uh, people have an enjoyable weekend. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do this week. I'm probably just sit around and do nothing. Should definitely work on some uh, some videos, but with uh, with what's it called right around the corner, uh, 2.8, <laughs> it's kind of like, eh, I better wait and see what happens before I start going crazy with that, you know? All right, and we can buy some more alloys, and then let's add another five battleships to the battleship fleet. Hells yeah. Oh, we also got to add the admiral. There we go. Boop. All right, notice how uh, a bunch of people, well, I shouldn't say a bunch, but the Kroll Confederacy went from overwhelming to superior simply because we built a bunch of ships. And now it's like, hey, um, don't fuck with us because we still have fleets. Let's get rid of these notifications. My God, the time goes super slow at this point. That's honestly, we're getting all sorts of really, really cool stuff with both the free update and with the Federation's DLC next Thursday. What I am most looking forward to is the results of this under-the-hood performance enhancement. Um, I'm just genuinely curious to see like how much it improves. Um, don't get me wrong. I love playing in a large Research galaxy because concluded. you can have... It's just more stuff to explore, you know? More stuff can be in the galaxy. It's as simple as that. But... But, 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 oh my god, 
the performance goes in the pooper uh, in the late game. Especially when you have a lot of empires, you have a lot of species, a lot of primitives, all that good stuff. So I'm really curious to see how it goes because for the last, ooh, especially the last like four months here, five months when I've been playing Iron Man games quite a bit in my off time, not not a huge amount, but a fair bit in my uh, in my downtime. And it's like, you know what, I feel like I feel like playing some Stellaris. I've been playing on a lot of small and medium galaxies. Mostly small, honestly, but quite a bit on the medium galaxies, too. And, you know, I don't want to say it was about 50-50. It was more like 60% 60, 60 small and 40% medium. Because the performance, like the speed of the game, even on a medium galaxy, is significantly faster. I shouldn't Well, I shouldn't say significantly, but it's... Very noticeably, it's noticeably faster, and in a small galaxy, it's significantly that faster. At this point in the game, oh yeah, huge difference. Especially when, within like the first 100 or 150 years, you actually like wipe everybody else out. <laughs> that definitely helps, obviously. Alright, uh, Ender, you're gonna have another advanced research complex. All right, Razor's Mineral Emporium. What are we going to do here? You could use another civilian fabricator, I think. You have a building slot uh, available. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Ministry of Production, anybody? I think so. Uh, na, 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 na. Oh, there it is, the Ministry of Production. Very good. Okay, uh, Thor's Hammer. Let's get the Robot Assembly Plant online. Where is it? There it is. Robot assembly plant. I guess for the habitats in the new update, we can put housing buildings on them, or I'm wrong. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look into that um, ahead of time. Okay, so we got 42 pot. Why do we have an unemployed specialist? That makes no sense. Uh, research labs. Yes, please. And then Payne's Pleasure Palace. Planetary capital... Thank you very much. All right. What else can we do here? That's that city district for some more housing. Make sure there's a couple more jobs, too. I got a jet. Catch you on the Discord. What? You got to go already? Jeez, JB. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll, uh, I'll hit you up later. We got to play some Mass Effect this weekend, dude. We need to uh, whip out some... Uh, I swear to God, you need to get, like... The really cool weapons, like the N7 Typhoon, the Particle Rifle. You know, it'd be great if we could bro -foon together, as I like to call it. Okay, so we have some military fleets ready to rock and roll. We got 30 cruisers and 15 battleships. And we are going to attack these bitch-ass marauders. Why? Because they're bitches. And they deserve to die. Also because I'm kind of bored Research and just want to go concluded. kill them. So the forward defense fleet is the cruisers. We're going to make them follow the strategic readiness fleet. Because the cruisers are probably faster. The Sid Nation wants a research agreement. Okay, sure. Flash coolant done. Uh, let's go ahead and do focusing arrays. Sure. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. All right, uh, we're, get, we're getting 473 energy credits from trade value. That's not a hell of a lot, but it's a decent amount. Uh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to check out trade routes. Do we still have piracy problems? And No, there's still, there's still some piracy, but I don't know if it's a problem, that's for sure. All right, uh, strategic readiness fleet. Oh, they're going to get there in 500 days? Why is it going to take so long? Yikes. That's a long, long time. Uh, did I equip them with all the thrusters and good stuff? Uh, yeah, they've got impulse thrusters. Impulse thrusters. All right, so what is my fleet policy, I wonder? War Doctrine, hit and run. Oh, no, I'm going to change that to rapid deployment. I like that 25% sublight speed bonus. Um, actually, fun fact, Stefan Anon has a little video out uh, that he released 
not too long ago, uh, sometime this week, about exactly that, uh, ship disengagement chance. And I, th I found the results quite intriguing. I wasn't terribly surprised, but it's interesting to see um, some hard numbers after some uh, uh, repeat tests and the like. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy for seeing that kind of stuff. Seeing that kind of content being made public on the YouTubes, because I eat that crap up. All right, so we're okay on admin caps. Still got like 30 before we run into issues. Influence is fine. Uh, yeah, seriously, my only real complaint right now is... Uh, the timer is going hella slow, so it's going to take a bajillion years. Looking, looking forward to the Juggernaut and the Mega Shipyard. Oh, of course. Everybody's going to go crazy about the Juggernaut and the Mega Shipyard. The Mega Shipyard is going to be oodles of fun. Uh, DJ pointed out in the uh, feature stream, uh, not the one from today, that was the multiplayer one, but I think it was the one from yesterday, uh, that the Mega Shipyard is actually the fastest megastructure to build. So if you're looking to get a megastructure under your control in order to be able to take the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk and get the other megastructures like the Matter Decompressor, the Dyson Sphere, and the Ring World uh, available for construction, or the technology is available, I should say, um, then the Mega Shipyard is the way to go. At, le at least that that's in his words. I'm looking forward to testing that out myself because I am genuinely curious if that's the case. Um, I personally find that the Century Array builds pretty fast. Each section is only 720 days, uh, I do believe, and there's only there's four of them. And the Interstellar Assembly also builds each section in, I think, only 720 days, and but there's four of them. Uh, so... Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to run a couple tests and uh, investigative journalism. <laughs> All right, how much longer on this? Forty-three months. Woohoo! Yikes, we're almost halfway through the stream. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna synthetic. I don't think we're gonna complete synthetic evolution before the stream ends, just because the timer is going so slow. Every day is like one, two, one. To like a lot of the days are taking several seconds. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Research concluded. Research concluded. Cell revitalization. Very good. Now let's. Ooh, let's not take fleet management procedures because that will. Eh, actually, we can. We can. Let's take Admiral, Admiral, Admiral T support staff instead. Uh, because by continuing to increase my naval capacity, if we lose ships during this battle with the Marauders, we will in fact be in breach of galactic law again, which will suck. So, let's not do that. All right, let's get up an upgraded food processing center on here because food is becoming a problem. Food is becoming a major problem. We are... Sitting at negative 0.84 right now. The chugging isn't as bad on the Series X as it is on the Xbox One. That I knew. I mean, like, duh. <laughs> it's a more powerful console, so... <laughs> That's a given. It would be kind of nice to be playing on a Series X, but... Uh, uh, me, personally, I don't think I'm going to get one until, like, late next year, probably. Um, I am always adamant about getting a console brand new, because, oh, when you're an old codger like me, you remember things like the launch of the PS3 and the Xbox 360, and... What's another good example? Um, even the launch of the Xbox One. And just issues. Issues, issues, issues. Whenever there is a um, console launch over the last few generations. Less hiccups. Uh, 
these days, if I recall right. Um, but still, the first batch of PlayStation 3s, and in particular Xbox 360s, my god, they have issues. Does anybody recall the Red Ring of Death? <laughs> I'm sure most of my viewers are old enough to remember the Red Ring of Death, if you were g still gaming uh, back then. In, uh, you know, 2005, 2006. I have both, and the difference is night and completed. day. That doesn't surprise me. End of the Nation of Quepta. Well, that's too bad. That was one of the two empires that was down here in the south. They were completed. neighbored to the Zephyr Dragon Enlightened Kingdom. And they are now gone. It's unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. But it looks like they got dealt the short stick. The uh, the Grey Tempest beat the crap out of them, for starters. Ringworld section restored. What are we going to name this one? Had the red ring on my first 360. See, I didn't get that. I always wait a year or so before I get the next generation. Yes. Be great if there will be available. If they if they will be available then. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Is like. Good luck fucking getting a new console right now. <laughs> For, you know, reasonable price. Because, what, they're still being sold by all those bloody scalpers, if I recall right? Blue Silver, what's happening? Thanks for popping in tonight. Hopefully I can entertain you for the next hour. I was gaming in the 80s. Research concluded. Well, fuck you. <laughs> um... I could I could very well say that I too was gaming in the eighties, but I was like fucking three. <laughs> of course I didn't even have internet at the time. Oh yeah. Stellaris is flying on PS five. Um What what were you playing? <laughs> Not much, yeah. Um What were you playing uh, back then, Blue Silver? Like what kind of games? Specifically, I, was, I wasn't going to ask like console or PC because almost all gaming was on a PC back then until the Nintendo came out, of course. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my god, look at this! <laughs> this is great. <laughs> okay, so out of 55 pops, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17 different species living on the RK Monopolis. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know what? We could create a penal colony here. And that would just be fantastic because this would create even more immigration pull on this world and increase the growth speed. That would be really entertaining. Um, some of the earliest games that I can remember playing... Uh, because I was born in 86, but like December of 86, to be specific. Uh, some of the earliest games I can remember playing were on the Nintendo Entertainment Console. There's a couple that I remember of the Atari 2600, like um, Yars Revenge, for example, is one that stands out, and Defender. My first console was an Atari 2600, and I still have it, yeah. Colico Vision, all the... Uh, you know, all the old start still games. Gotcha. Um, so things like, yeah, like I was saying, Yars Revenge, 79 for me. Fair enough. Uh, Centipede. Yeah, there's one. Uh, Yars Revenge, Defender. I remember those on the Atari 2600. Uh, let's get these habitation districts for. Actually, no, let's do an Astro Mining Bay first. Um, I remember, like I was saying, uh, so that, those are I remember those on the Atari 2600 on the NES I remember things like the original Legend of Zelda uh, and various other games that me and my brother would play together things like Duck Hunt and um, the hockey game Blades of Steel I remember that one oh that one was frustrating uh, what else was there there was a lot I'll just put it that way Okay, we need to buy minerals I feel sick. I just bought minerals. Land of opportunity and production targets. Ugh. Vomit time. All right. Uh, land of opportunity. Let's re-up that. And then let's also do production targets, capacity overload, and 
farming subsidies? Yeah, let's do that. And what else can we do? Oh, we can totes my goats to Omnifarious Acquisition. Yes, please. That'll work. Um, E.T.? Oh, uh, don't... No, go away. <laughs> Pac-Man, Contra, Dope Wars? Was that a thing? Pong. Everybody remembers Pong. Um, I don't think I had Pong for our Atari. Now that I think about it. I'm not even sure who bought... I'm not even sure who bought the Atari 2600 because uh, me and my brother... My brother's only about two years older than me. Uh, he was born in January of 85. So it sounds like he's only a year older than me, but he's actually two years older than me because January of 85, uh, January of 87 would be exactly two years. And I was born in December of 86, so a year and 11 months. So he's two years, he's basically two years older than me. But uh, yeah, I don't, and like, when was the Atari 2600 a thing? Uh, Dope Wars was a thing. Okay. Interesting. I would not have expected that. Uh, Space Invaders, yeah. Galaga! <laughs> Research concluded. Um, damn, what's another NES game? I remember it had this one NES game where it was like, uh, it was just the one cartridge, but it had like four games in one. And it had a tennis game, a golf game, and I can't remember. That was a great game. Bird vs. Dr. J. <laughs> what? I'm too young for some of these ones that you're talking about now, folks. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I the ones that stick out to me most are NES games because uh, I was just getting into those at ye ripe old age of three, three years, four years. I'm old. <laughs> uh, and the ones that stand out, the original Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Brothers, uh, I already said Blades of Steel. Um, pfft, what else was there? We had a bunch more. The one that frustrated me, though, was the freaking Who Framed Roger Rabbit game. That one pissed me off, because you would get caught by the stupid weasels, and they would, they would ask you a question, and you were supposed to press a button, for the right response, but it was never explained very well, like, what the buttons did. Either it was never explained very well, or I was just too fucking young and stupid to understand what the hell was going on. Uh, and, like, you had X amount of lives, and if you guessed wrong when the weasels caught you and asked you a question, then you lost a life. So it was like, every time they caught us, we lost a life, and it was very frustrating. But, yeah, it's whatever. Hostile Fleet Detective. What's going on, Cyphus? Good to see you, buddy. My favorite hockey game... Uh, I remember when the internet was not a thing. Uh, yeah, I can too. And when it was a thing, it was all about, you know, the good old fax machine noises when you're trying to play anything online. My favorite hockey game of all time was Mutant Leg Hockey. What? That sounds... interesting. My favorite hockey game of all time... Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98. And I'm sure I've talked about this in previous videos before, in previous streams before, so long-time viewers uh, who watch all of my stuff will uh, remember me mentioning it. But Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98. Uh, it was for the N64. And my favorite thing about it was playing in arcade mode. You would... Uh, uh, it was a really small rink. It was a really small rink. And you only had three on three. But the turbo you got, which was in the normal game, the quote-unquote simulation style of game, which gave you a quick little boost, uh, like a speed boost. But that, but that turbo had more rolls in the arcade mode uh, of Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98. Where if you had a turbo and you cross-checked somebody, by the way, that you, could have, you had buttons for uh, taking people down. There was one for trip, there was one for hook, there was one for cross-check. And then, the other, and then the fourth button was uh, the turbo. If you cross-checked somebody with the turbo available, you didn't have to press the turbo button. It just happened automatically when you cross-checked them. You would make them do a double backflip and send them flying into the boards. It was amazing. And then you could also hit turbo 
and shoot. Oops, I just unplugged my phone. Whoops, that's the reason why my thing isn't charging, because I'm wrecking the charging cable. Uh, if you hit turbo and shoot at the same time, you would get a... Uh, you would get a power shot which set the puck on fire and it could either launch the goalie into the back of the net and allow you to score or if the goalie just didn't save it like they didn't touch the puck uh, it would set the net on fire <laughs> that ET got my generation to buy that bull because of the movie oh yeah Blades of Steel yeah Ultima and Might and Magic Blades of Steel was awesome I never played Ultima you'll have to forgive me one that I one that I didn't play when I was super duper young but I loved playing the remake on the Game Boy Advance, the first Final Fantasy, the original Final Fantasy. I thought that game was awesome. I never, like I said, I never played it on the original Nintendo. I played the, what what did they call it for the Game Boy Advance? Final Fantasy 1 and 2, Dawn of Souls. So Final Fantasy 1, it was redone, uh, you know, better graphics and stuff made more sense and stuff like that. I thought that, I honestly, I just thought that that was a fantastic game. The way it played out and uh, you know the kind of story behind it it was cool Ocarina of Time was my first game that's fair that one I still remember that one made huge waves in the gaming uh, in the gaming on the gaming market because people were used to you know Legend of Zelda and adventure games like that being that top-down isometric uh, point of view so n64 comes out and you get super mario 64 which is a 3d platformer for starters and then the other one that came out was ocarina of time where it's a uh, 3d adventure game yeah they they it was a really amazing time to uh to be into gaming to be alive at the for starters and also be into gaming all right, so fighting. Uh, yeah, we're destroying them. We have no losses yet. Uh, we got a cruiser that's trying to. Do, we got a couple cruisers that are getting pretty badly beat up. Look at all the strike craft that we have, though, eh? I'm just gonna slow it right down. Take a look at all these little. Look at all these little strike craft ships. Something that you don't really notice if you don't build them, for starters. But the strike craft fighters look different depending on your ship set as well. And the humanoid ones look pretty neat. Oops, zooming in too far. Look at that guy. He lo he looks he looks angry. That honestly looks like an alien style of ship. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. Uh, double double dribble in Blades of Steel. I was killing people. Rome Total War was my first real time strategy. Huh. That's an interesting first real time strategy. Mine was Command and Conquer Red Alert. Shortly after that, I tried out StarCraft. Look at all these strike craft. Speed it up. Well, this guy's getting absolutely massacred. We have... Yeah, our missiles are not penetrating. But a lot of our other weapon types are, which is great. Dude. That was like synchronized strike craft stuff. A new admiral has been added to the leader pool. Okay. Well, that was that. Uh, did we lose anybody? No, we didn't. Holy crap. Okay. Cool. Well, we will go to the next one in just a second. Our cruisers need some repairs. Wow. They got beat up a fair bit. I was the king of asteroids, my first space game. <laughs> Cylon ships, yeah. Are you a Cylon? I might be. You'll never know, by your command. Uh, the one game that I actually was able to figure out when I was really young was Pac-Man. I figured out... I figured out there's... Uh, there's different patterns depending on which levels, but I, I was actually able to figure out the patterns and I would get to like level 20 or something like that. And uh, anybody, anybody else that, uh, you know, I bumped into some friends at the arcade sometimes, like they were just amazed at the, at the fact that 
I can get that far into Pac-Man, and a bunch of them couldn't even make it to, like, level 5 or something. They would, they would die on, I don't know, 2 or 3 pretty regularly. <laughs> I feel so old now, born in 71. You fucking geezer! <laughs> I just messed with you. 93? Oh, yeah. Don't feel bad, me 75. I mean, you guys are only, like, just hitting 50 pretty much, right? So, I'll sweat over it. This is not a time for you to feel old, but a time for you to realize that now is when you're supposed to be having a midlife crisis. <laughs> Alright, uh... Do we have any badly damaged cruisers? I don't... Not really. I'm actually one of the young guys. Yeah. See, I've, fo I've found that I've always been able to uh, connect with both uh, older gamers and younger gamers because I was born right around the t I was born right around the time where the games industry really took off again, and uh, you know when it started becoming the media juggernaut that it is now. Uh, so I can remember some of these older games from, you know, when I was super duper young, but at the same time, uh, the games that I grew up playing are some of those huge classics that, uh, you know, changed the industry, like, for all time, you know, like Mario 64 as the first 3D platformer made a massive impact. Uh, Legend of Zelda, um, Ocarina of Time, Ocarina of Time, however you want to pronounce it, but yeah. That was another major impact on the gaming industry, and then, you know, other games that came out later on that, even ones that I never played, like, for example, Half-Life, um, Command and Conquer, the original Command and Conquer, that kind of stuff, you know? Natural Sanctuary is declined! Fuck you! Did not want that. Um, yeah, it was... I don't know. It was just really cool. The enemy of my enemy. Let's go ahead and support it. Just for fun. So, uh... Does this change anything? An enemy of one is the enemy of all. If one of our numbers is attacked, should we not permit any of our number to punish the offender? Grants the counterattack cast a spell eye on empires that are not a galactic community member and are in an offensive war against a galactic community member. This increases ship upkeep. We get some more naval capacity and diplomatic weight from fleet power, which is kind of neat, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Well, I feel like I'm known for it. Goldeneye, dude. Everybody remembers Goldeneye. Uh, I don't think Goldeneye was as, was as big of a deal as it was. I think it was just a big deal because it brought... Uh, first-person shooter to consoles, but in the grand scheme of things, eh, I'm not sure it was as impactful as other shooters. Um, if you, in my personal opinion, uh, Halo had a far bigger impact on uh, console first-person shooters than GoldenEye did. Just my opinion. But that's kind of a cheat because Halo is just one of those games where it's just like, oh my god, everybody was talking about it. Everybody was playing it. You know, that kind of a thing. Um, I'll never stop gaming. I plan to be the old fart who never really ever grows up. Join the club, buddy. Honestly, I plan to be... <laughs> I've been saying this for a while. I expect to be dead. I expected to be dead before I'm 40, but I think it's going to be before I'm 50 at this rate. Good philosophy going forward. I never played Half Life either. Yep, it was popular only because of the multiplayer. Goldeneye. Yeah, I think I think Goldeneye was, it was really mostly popular because of the multiplayer. The single player was a bit of a chore. And in the grand scheme of things, if you tried to go back and play Goldeneye now, the controls were just really bleh. And uh, I kind of feel the same about like the the default original controls. I kind of feel the same about. Perfect Dark as well, and I loved Perfect Dark. I played the ever-loving shit out of Perfect Dark. I got all the cheats, I beat all of the missions on the hardest difficulties, 
uh, and to get cheats in rare first-person shooters, you had to beat missions in a certain time limit in order to get um, the cheats unlocked. And some of them were hard as fuck. Like, I remember one in Perfect Dark. It was where you were on Air Force One, which is, you know, the president's plane. Uh, and you had to complete that mission in, like, less than four minutes. That one was brutal, but it was so worth it because that gave you the unlimited ammo, no reloads cheat. So you could literally just hold the trigger and keep shooting. <laughs> Poor Halo. Once 343 took over, it went downhill. Uh, yeah. I would I would 110% agree, but it, eh, whatever. Subjective. Some people like the newer Halos, so it's okay. Uh... If I knew I would live this long, I'd, I would have taken better care of myself. Yeah. Just for the time period to put a first-person shooter on a console. Yeah, that's fair. Well, we lost two cruisers. That's too bad. That's okay. Oh, there goes another one. Oh, that is, that, those are the destroyed ones. Okay. That one broke apart. Let's see it. Oh, that's too bad. I don't like how the explosions of the ships in this are still sometimes just a poof. <laughs> Rather than than having them actually explode. That's one thing I think they did really awesome in uh, Sins of a Solar Empire. That's a fantastic little game. I have it for my computer. Uh, these bloody little raider ships. They're a pain in the ass to take out. Um, yeah, I like... If anything... Uh, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark proved that you could do a shooter on consoles, and it was possible to have them. But shooters on consoles really did not get perfected, like you, because you, you, you still had things like uh, Quake. Uh, if I recall right, there was a you got Quake on like PlayStation One, did you not? And like Duke Nukem uh, was on the 64 as well, uh, but it wasn't. I don't think it was until Halo that the whole two-stick control thing, the modern two-stick control, really was perfected. And until then, until that happened, it was kind of just... Eh. I, I can't think of the word. I don't think they were... Uh, you know, I, I don't think they were taken as seriously as they are now. Like... First-person shooters on console, obviously, that's like one of the most popular, uh, what's it called, um, genres. I mean, look at Call of Duty. <laughs> it sells millions of copies every goddamn year still, for example. I agree. Uh, that, that first pistol, though, man. Oh, dude, the Halo 1 pistol. Whew. The bestest ever. All right, we're attacking the Marauders in their home system. Time to die, motherfuckers. Oh my god, I forgot they have two Galleons here. But that's okay. No, sorry, three Galleons. Uh, but that's okay, because they don't have very many fleets. So long as they don't all come after us like simultaneously, I think we'll be more than okay. We'll just take them out little bits at a time. And... Let's go after the small fleet first. There we go. That guy's dealt with. Get the fuck out of my library. Oh, another galleon is closing in. And any other fleets coming in? Uh, nope. We'll just wipe out the one galleon. I like looking at these strike craft. They look so cool. That is that is some synchronized flying right there when there's hundreds of them like that making those kind of maneuvers and they're not crashing into each other. <laughs> You know? It's kind of funny. Just my opinion. Ooh, big freeze up there. Okay, there we go. So the purple lasers are the Galleon's lasers because they have UV lasers. The green ones are from our strike craft. And we are not using lasers. We're using missiles, strike craft, and phase disruptors. I don't even see phase disruptors shooting. Oh, there they are. They're tough to see. Because of all the point defense. <laughs> Here comes the strike craft. They're going to fuck you up. What else we got here? 
I miss the old arcade days. First game I ever be beat at the arcade was the Altered Beast. Huh. <laughs> FPS on console? Everyone knows mobile is where sh FPS shines. Shut up, Matt. <laughs> Me too, I miss the arcade atmosphere. Uh, I haven't been doing arcade in a long-ass time, honestly. And I kind of want to go check one out. I don't remember if there's any in town that are open right now, though. Um, I mean, restrictions are being lifted on various uh, businesses throughout the province right now because of, you know, lots of people getting vaccinated in Alberta. Jesus, I've forgotten how slow this game runs on last gen. Thanks, Cyphus. Thank you for the reminder. Going to the mall, too. Ugh. I really don't care for going to the mall. I never have. Ooh, easy now. Just about dropped the controller. One sec. All right, I'm back. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you still hear me? Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. Like, yeah. This was a fairly... Honestly, this stream game has been, like, the most... Uh, what's the word I want to use? The most chill because nothing really crazy happened it wound up being like by the second stream we kind of, we had kind of built up our territory and then we pretty much just sat there and uh, did our own thing uh, for the rest of the game so yeah. I put my name at top of the board as Fa Kuei and at the time they couldn't delete top scores oh okay oh Fa Q gotcha Now I get it. You know, I remember one of the last... Uh, the last time I went to Vegas... I've only been there twice, and I went there twice within the same, like, year time span. Uh, but the second time I went there, one of these casino games that I remember coming across... It was some kind of Star Trek thingy. And uh, a friend of mine put in a coin to play... And his progress, it, like, when we turned away and came back to check on him and, like, meet up with him again, like, 20 minutes later, the end of the Photician Ravagers, the once proud nomadic warrior culture of the Photician is no more. Forces from the Not a Scientology cult have destroyed the last of the massive space stations that house the majority of their population. Refugees from their surviving civilian population have scattered across the galaxy. Although, so, although some Photician pirate and mercenary fleets still may still be unaccounted for, the loss of their space dwellings is a devastating blow that they cannot recover from. This puts a definite end to their rating. Indeed. Perfect. All right, now let's go ahead and study these areas. Gonna send in my science ships. Hell yeah. Let's go science ships. Go study debris. Study debris. That's what all the cool kids. Photician refugees arrive. All right, you do you. And that's those guys. Now everybody else can just uh, automatically explore. Let's have a look around. There, there. I guarantee there's nothing of significant value in these systems because there very rarely is. There's no habitable worlds. There might be, like, strategic resources or something like that, or decent resource deposits. Who knows? But no wormhole, no gateway, no black hole. That's the worst. A black hole would have been great. I would have spent the boatload of influence necessary to put a star base there in the right Riador system just so that I can cut that area off and then extend to the black hole and build a frickin' matter decompressor. That would have been amazing. Okay, let's take a look at how badly our economy is going in the shitter now that I have ignored moving pops for the last little bit. Uh, okay, let's resettle some. Let's go ahead and resettle. Time to move out now. Get the fuck out of my library. And that should be enough. And Runicat's gemstone room. Let's do another research lab. And there we go. That should be enough. 
Champagne's Pleasure Palace. Royal Duke's Jam Jamboree. I am definitely going to plop a hydroponics farm down. Boop! There we go. Next up, there are some mining districts. The rest would be city districts. Alright! Thor's Hammer. What do we got here? Let's upgrade Habitat Central Control. And my goodness, do we ever need Hollow Theaters. Day's Doll Dealership. Okay, we have one open job, but no how... Really? What the fuck? How did that happen? Okay. I apparently miscalculated. Okay, I'm a little, I'm a little choked now. Ah, uh, what the hell can I remove? Gas refiners, roboticist. Oh, that's right. These aren't. This isn't a gestalt, so it'll take. They will have to upgrade to the. Ooh, yeah. I don't know. Damn. Semper Buffo's Energy Consulting. If you're having energy problems, come to Semper Buffo's Energy Consulting. We'll get your shit on track. Uh, Frogman, subpar supplies. Oh man, we could tote some goats to another foundry arcology. Yep. And we'll add a chemical plant too, just for fun. Uh, Mickey B's Entertainment. Megaplex. You know what we're going to do here? We're going to do a research segment. That's what the, all the cool kids are doing. How about an exotic gas refinery as well? Because we need one. We definitely need one. We definitely need one. Alright, how many research jobs does this make again? Oh my gosh, it makes 20. I don't think anybody's going to... Yeah, we have no pops here, so that's not really going to make any difference. <laughs> We've only got about a half hour left in the stream. Are we going to synthetically ascend in nine months? Yes, we are. So for the last little bit of this stream, when we complete our synthetic ascension, it'll be late. It'll be uh, just in time to piss off the spiritualist fallen empire. But I seem to remember... <laughs> Excuse me. is in the galaxy. Uh, so yeah. That'll be an interesting way to end this particular stream game. Now, uh, as I said, I'm not expecting to be able to stream next week, but I do hope to uh, for the Federation's launch day. That would be fantastic. Um, of course, I will keep you updated as to what's going on. Um, other streams, uh, I will definitely, I should be able to definitely stream Monday. With some more Mass Effect Legendary Edition. That should be a complete non-issue. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but anything else. I really can't say right now. Because uh, I fully expect. Uh, things to start going down. In the middle of next week. I'm not 100% sure. We'll just have to wait and see how things go. Christ it might wind up being a little bit later than that. What I don't want to do. Ultimately what I don't want to do. Is like start a stream game after the Federation's DLC and the update drops and stuff like that, and uh, wind up uh, going AWOL. You know, like, maybe we get a few chapters in, and then I wind up going AWOL for, you know, X amount of time. I would feel like a complete asshole if that happened. All right, let's go. To, let's get out of here. You know, let's go ahead and move out, move these guys over to Maragdus. Uh We're still out in a bunch of wars... And I don't know what the dealio is. We have completed focusing arrays. Let's get applied superconductivity, boyos. So we we magically jumped up to uh, 349 minerals per month. How did I manage that? I'm going to say it's because of the production targets plus omnifarious acquisition. Didn't really have anything to do with actually increasing our... Uh, what's it called, our minerals per month, because we only just colonized that new habitat. JB's Rock Packers. Let's go ahead and add some more Astro Mining Bays. 
And one more habitation district. Uh, Runic Cat's Gemstone Room, I think. No, that's not it. Which one is it? Uh, Day's Doll Dealership? Yes, that's, this was the one. I am going to replace this Astro Mining Bay with a Habitation District again. And we're going to lose some jobs. But we're going to slap down... Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to wait and see what happens. It'll be really interesting to see the new types of habitats, uh, the way that you can uh, build them up uh, in stages, similar to multi-stage megastructures, um, as well as what kind of um, construction you can uh, have on them. Looking forward to trying it out. It took me a very long time. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, sorry, I am exhausted. I always get so so tired and, and sleepy on the Friday streams because, you know, it's, it's the end of the work week. I'm actually pretty pooched, but, you know, I do I do enjoy streaming. I, I do enjoy doing this stuff, uh, jumping on the live streams and having a bunch of you come and hang out with me for the evening. Um, I only hope that uh, the entertainment is adequate <laughs> for those of you that spend the time uh, to... Uh, chill with me in the evenings. Nevertheless, whether you think it's just a giant fucking waste of your time uh, or not, I greatly appreciate y'all being here. Maybe we can get some more people in the live streams uh, down the road as well. That would be absolutely fabulous. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm just, I'm always pooched by the end of the week. Um, after the, after the work week, as well as you know, a week of streaming, is another thing, as well. So it's just like, ugh, I'm ready to go to bed by you know eight o'clock on a Friday, but I need to get up early tomorrow. I got to go do some groceries. Well, I got to hit the bank, and then I got to do some grocery shopping, and after that, well, there, there'll be some house chores uh, as usual. But uh, oh my gosh, another war! Hello. Did we? Oh my god, did the Citizen Union of Terza... Oh, wow. Now they've got a robot uprising. <laughs> Sucks to be you guys. Machine uprising in the Citizen Union of Terzam. Known as the Dar Replicators. <laughs> Fuck you guys. That's what you get. Let's try and talk to them. Greetings, Super Night Lizard people. We are currently impartial to your kind. Well, they're not fanatic purifiers, so that's a thing. Uh, improving, representing our interest in the galactic community. Busy improving, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about the galactic community. The Dar Replicators greets you, Organics. Um, yeah. Separatists. This civilization came into being when it rebelled and seceded from another empire. I like how the little origin things change if somebody is, like, uplifted or something. Or maybe not uplifted, but uh, enlightened and stuff like that, you know? It, or, as this one is, rebelled. Um, that kind of stuff. How that little origin changes just because of, uh, you know, how the empire came to be in the galaxy. I've always thought that I've thought that is really, really cool. The one that I have yet to see is a primitive empire uh, going from early space age to a spacefaring civilization. I haven't seen that in a long time because I have a habit of wiping out <laughs> of wiping out uh, primitive empires before they can become their own spacefaring civilization or um, subjugating them. Uh, I, I either wipe out the primitive civilization, I subjugate them, uh, I enlighten and subjugate them, or um, what's the other thing? Uh, use them for resource production, like make them livestock or grid amalgamation, one of the two. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I didn't have fun hanging with you and the rest of the guys in the chat. I appreciate it. This is definitely a fun community. Same here. Greatly appreciate it, guys. Oh, that means a lot. 
I would not. Well, I mean, it goes without saying that I would not be doing this crap if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't for a bunch of you guys popping in regularly to check out the streams and whatnot. Um, and even on the YouTube, there's a bunch of people that uh, regularly uh, watch the video uh, because I see the names pop. I see the same names pop up fairly regularly with uh, leaving comments and stuff. So. Honestly, if it wasn't for that kind of interaction with, with a bunch of you, it would be very... Oh. Okay. Well, that's too bad. Uh, it would be extremely, like, disheartening to not see that, and I probably would not have uh, kept kept doing this for as long as I have, in all, in all honesty. Anyways, um, moving on. Well, this person has sure jumped in here to grab this. Oh, two crystals and one exotic gas. Damn. That's too bad. I missed out on that. The Senate floor is in session. Voting to enact resolution. Grants the counterattack, Cassus Belli. Um, so this is the enemy of my enemy. Are we supporting this? We are supporting this. And, of course, these assholes are opposed to it. But, you know, nobody cares what you want. Fuck you guys. Uh, proclamation broadcast. Administrative. Ooh, let's do administrative efficiency because we are about to hit our admin cap. Not that it freaking matters. Uh, one month. Oh, my gosh. We synthetically ascend in one month. Uh, uh, Demi Noxious. How you doing tonight? Thanks for popping by this evening. There's still about an hour left in the stream, so feel free to hang out and, uh, you know, chat with us. We were talking about really, really old video games because there's a bunch of old fuckers in chat. And I myself am an old fucker. <laughs> we old fuckers got to stick together and look out for each other. The only other people that look out for old fuckers is other old fuckers. <laughs> Uh, Governor Levin. Oh, oops. Uh, the synthetic age. At last, the flesh cages that imprisoned us have been purged, and the neural patterns of our citizens have all been uploaded into new synthetic units. Disease, aging, and all the other wellsprings of misery associated with an organic existence are now a thing of the past. Future historians will no doubt refer to this as the beginning of a new age for our civilization, and perhaps for the entire galaxy. Since we have shed our former organic identity, it is only appropriate that we come up with a new name for our improved synthetic forms. We are so much more than we once were. Gains access to the assimilation citizenship species right, allowing future additions to the populace to be turned into synths. So here's something cool. We should be able to assimilate our psychic species and have some psychic... Uh, Uh, some psychic synths. Citizenship assimilation. There we go. And where are the other psionic ones? The half sojourney. We are going to make these guys assimilate. There we go. And the half norilga. We are going to assimilate you. Boop. And who else do we have? Any other psychics besides the humans? Uh, the queptilium. Okay. Uh, assimilation. There we go. And the Rochoys. Oh my god, I forgot there's a lot of them. Heh. <laughs> Assimilation. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's going to be it. Yep. Still not lizard people. Super not lizard people illustratum. <laughs> I like that. Alright, uh, we can change the appearance. Uh, what do we, we want to go with, with the appearance? I wonder... If there are any ladies in the chat, I didn't mean to leave you out your cool... What? I didn't mean to leave you out your cool too? Okay. Uh, let's go with this appearance. This is the Lithoid robot appearance, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have five trait points and four trait picks. So let's go ahead with mass-produced, uh, recycled. Those are two really good picks. And then we'll also go with... Uh, huh. Huh. Two trade picks left, two points left. Domestic protocols. Uh, I guess we lose that, hey? Let's go with double jointed and propaganda machines? Nah. Uh, durable. There we go. 
create template, and then we go. Uh, can we apply it? Oh, right. We are modifying or uplifting a species right now because we are modifying the robots. Are you playing a Scientology cult? Uh, no, we're playing as not a Scientology cult, as you can see from the name of the Empire. Oh my god, what is happening? Where did you come from? Oh, that's why. I, th I thought we were being invaded for a moment. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> that yours was a depraved species was not unknown to us, but your latest act of insanity has surpassed even our darkest fears, making imperfect copies of your brains and plugging them into mobile synthetic containers is not the same as transferring your essence into a new body, for such a thing cannot be done. Your souls are lost forever. Do you even realize the enormity of your mistake? Destroying the bodies you were gifted with at birth was nothing less than the collective suicide of your entire species. There is truly no hope for you now. Superstitious fools. Well, they're pissed at us now, so they're probably going to declare war on us very, very quickly. Uh, where are they? Holy Guardians. There they are. This fallen empire dedicates itself to the preservation and defense of its holy sites. Colonizing systems that they consider sacred is likely to incur their ire. They're also pissed at us. Uh, dormant? Patronizing. Oh, okay. This fallen empire views us as errant children in need of their guidance. They may deign to bestow gifts of technology, resources, or ships upon us. Speak, child! Uh, anyways... They might not attack us, because they're not angry or belligerent against us, so that's a thing. Their origin is Elder Race. This civilization, current generation of galactic powers. Eons of stagnation gradually reduced their empire to a mere shadow of what it once was. I like those little blurbs. In the origins that you can never pick, but they're just there because they are a part of the galaxy, you know what I mean? All right, uh, Payne's Pleasure Palace. We have four districts left. Why can't I do more generator districts? I should do more generator districts. Why don't I do more generator districts? Just stop again to say hey. What's up, Frogman? Thanks for jumping in, bro, Chacho. You say that in this nonchalant way as though you're, like, mad at me or something. Are you upset that I still don't have Mac Warrior 5? <laughs> in the PC version, there's a relic that lets you colonize Holy Worlds. Did you lose some ground? I have not seen last stream on Y on YouTube yet. No, dude, this is the exact same te territory that we've had for the whole fucking game. <laughs> when the console gets up there, we'll get that too. Fair enough. Oh shit! <laughs> we might have pissed them off. Yes. Oh, I thought it was just a bit larger. Nah. It began as a subtle shift in the Sathorian behavior. Scattered reports of their ships, once once rarely seen outside their own space, now being spotted in remote systems all across the galaxy. Highly advanced scouting vessels visiting ancient ruined worlds, refusing all hails and fleeing when attacked. Their purpose and mission unknown until now. We now know that the Sathori were preparing, recovering the data banks of survey beacons and automated scouting posts left behind when they retreated to their present borders, gathering information for their return to the galactic stage. In Sathori's space, fleets are gathering, armies are being mustered, and ancient factories roar to life. For the first time in an age, the Sathori zealots are looking outwards beyond their borders and towards the galaxy at large. As their decaying shipyards are repaired and refitted and the dormant systems of Titan foundries come online, the rest of the galaxy is left with only one question. Who will this once sleeping giant target first in their quest to reclaim age-old glory lost? Giants in the playground. Decrepit fools. Uh, so that's these guys. They are now the Sathori Zealots. And now they're arrogant towards us. Submit to the faith and save your souls, super not lizard peoples. It'll distract them. It's not yet too late for you. Eh, sure. You could say so. Prepare the fleets. The Holy Crusade is about to start. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is the spiritualist fallen empire. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Primo Victoria! <laughs> or how, how the fuck does that song go? I have no idea. 
but anyways, there's only 15 minutes left in the stream, so I'm just gonna let the economy totally go to shit. And I'm gonna watch the Sathori Zealots and see if whose ass they start kicking. Don't do it! It's all good. Hell, I might even I might even call it early tonight. I don't know. Pretty sleepy. If you submit to the spirituals, you you ban will stuff. You ban will stuff. Uh oh. Well, I'd really hate it for stuff will you ban, stuff ban will you, <laughs> and all your robot pops will be destroyed. Eh. It's not like we really are alive, are we? Do we deserve to be alive? Rochoids. Uh, are these guys still assimilating? I wonder. Um, what are they being assimilated into? Are we? Do we have any psychic robots? I don't think so. Probably coming for you. Maybe. Robots. You have to ban robot workers. Eh, that's fine. It's not like we need robots, right? We are the robots. <laughs> I could have had another four pops, uh, four generator districts. Why did I do four city districts? Moby! What are you doing? I don't know. Two months for the species modification of L robots. Uh, Ender Empire Capital. What do we got going on here? Why aren't you working as a farmer? God damn you! Do farm work. All right, undergoing assimilation. Uh, this pop is being integrated into our collective. Uh, how much longer? The reason why the assimilation is taking so bloody long is because uh, it's every in-game month, if I recall correctly. Let me double check. Uh, set rights, assimilation. Pops of the species are altered to, over time to better match the dominant species of the Empire. Pops that are in the process of being assimilated will not produce any resources. Uh, what the hell? Uh, fuck it, whatever. Applied superconductivity. Good, 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 good. Let's get level three of applied superconductivity. We have analyzed the debris in Arbitraeus. Wow, we got kinetic battery, antimatter missiles. Cool. Got some physics uh, research and some engineering research. That's always cool. When was the last time anyone had two fallen empires go to war with each other? I've never had it happen in my playthroughs. Do you have leviathans? Because you need leviathans for that to be a thing. And we got more more science. Oh, modification complete on the robot species. Winning. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Uh, there they are. Okay, we got mass produced, recycled, and the other thing of a bobber. The other thing of a bobber. Domestic protocols. Very good, very nice. We have not assimilated a single one of these other species. That's too bad. Because I really, really, really would like to see some psionic robots, hey? Eh? It's a thing. I've seen it. People have taken screenshots, and I've seen them with psionic robots. It's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> but in the grand scheme of things, it is also totally doable. That's one of the awesome things about Stellaris, where it's just like, huh, I wonder if you can. The answer is pro is more than likely, you can. <laughs> Uh, I mean, provided it is, it is within, the, within the confines of the game, of course. What you cannot do is be like, I wonder if I can uh, create a dimensional pocket somewhere in the galaxy that allows me to send ships through, which instantly teleports them to another galaxy that I can then begin invading. Because the answer is no. <laughs> yep, and it just hasn't happened. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, you, you do have to always have... Uh, at least two fallen empires as well in your games. Um, the odds of it happening are actually not that great, even when one fallen empire awakens, because it has to have a second one awaken, and then they are, you know, at war with each other. I have them in my empire right now. There you go. 
You heard it here, folks. Okay, our Empire Sprawl is... Redonculus! Uh, Rune of Cats, Gemstone Room. Let's get an administrative park for no reason. We got more science. Science is good. What do we, what's just happened? Scientist Herbert Eberderberder just died uh, because the ship was destroyed. Where the... Damn, that's a lot of ships. A lot of ships. They're from the Zepidragon Enlightened Kingdom. Oh, there's the other uh, Marauder Empire. I wonder if I should attack them. That sure is a nice looking space base you have there. It would be a shame if something happened to it. I share it happened. There you go. It's a thing. Rising unemployment on Runicat's gemstone room. Ah, uh, institutely increased benefits. Sure, whatever. I don't care. We'll get through this together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a real government official here and just be like, "Hey, we'll get through this together. We're all in this together." <laughs> or some such other bullshit. I've had all other events happen. That's why I put three fallen empires in. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's... The chance of it actually triggering is fairly low, if I recall correctly, because as I said, it does require one fallen empire awakening, but a second empire also has to awaken. Or sorry, a second fallen empire also has to awaken, and they have to declare war on each other. And I think it's possible for two fallen empires to awaken, but they don't rival each other I think actually no you know what I, I'm probably wrong don't quote me on that uh, now I can't remember I don't think that's a thing uh, forget what I said uh, but yeah it is very 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 finicky and could entirely just not happen it's, it's more unlikely to happen than it is likely even if you have multiple fallen empires last time I had the war in heaven the entire galaxy united into a super federation <laughs> uh yeah, that was my, my last Iron Man, which was like fall of last year where I had a war in heaven. Uh, we had something similar happen. There was, oh man, there was a lot of empires in that. that I just remember that I gave up on that game because uh, the late game timer was so atrocious. Like it was worse than it is now in this current stream. Uh, like a month took several minutes uh, because there was so many empires... Uh, there was about nine AI empires, uh, and then I was the tenth, and there was three fallen empires, and um, that was at uh, that was uh, at the conception of the galaxy. But there was also a bunch of primitives that were enlightened. There was uh, three that I can remember off the top of my head that were enlightened into vassals, and there was two that I actually enlightened and released. So they were like additional AI empires. So there was like 15 uh, regular empires, including my own. And uh, there was the three fallen empires. And of course there were the marauders. I had two marauder empires as well. Uh, one of them did have a great con mid-game event happen. And they split off into multiple like conate empires. Uh, and what else was there? Damn, uh, we didn't have... We, it, this was before Megacorp, so no care of Uh, but yeah, anyways, like, the, 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 the thing was atrocious. But anyways, uh, what wound up happening was the war in heaven occurred, and it was hilarious because the only empire that took a side, there was only one empire that took a side, and so, and it was ones that enlightened and vassalized a primitive empire. So they were both uh, fighting for their one of their fallen empire overlords. Uh, but I'm not joking. The rest of the galaxy joined the League of Non-Aligned Powers. So it was like 12, 13, or sorry, yeah, about about 12, something like that. 12 AI empires 
in the League of Non-Aligned Powers. And I was like, what the fuck? And uh, I also said I will not join. I will not join one of the Fallen Empires because I was playing on the under settings where I was just like a complete fucking powerhouse by this time in the game. So I was ready to just you know steamroll one of the Fallen Empires. Um, but yeah, I was like, ah, League of Non-Aligned Powers. I don't care. I don't need to. I don't need to be subjugated. And uh, like the rest of the galaxy joined the League of Non-Aligned Powers. It was pretty crazy. That is the only time I've seen that happen. Usually, most of the AI empires join one or the other fallen empires, and it's only like a couple that uh, join that uh, make the League of Non-Aligned uh, Powers uh, Federation. Um, so yeah, it was it was really 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 funny when that happened. I and I will probably never see that happen again. Uh, anyways, uh, there's only a few minutes left in the stream, so uh, I'm just gonna call it right then and there uh we beat up the fallen uh, the fallen the marauder empire that was over here right next to us uh so you know mission accomplished easy peasy lemon squeezy and uh yeah i can tell some goats do uh there's more debris scanning i can tell some goats uh, finish off the evening with the usual uh youtube sellout crap that happens at the end of the stream uh so i'm just gonna save the game uh, I might continue this uh, off camera sometime in the future. I doubt it though, because a new update and b uh, the time it takes to get through a month of this game right now is ridiculous uh, because of all the stuff that's been going on. Thanks, Sniper Buffo. Good to have you here again, buddy. Uh, so, yeah, that's gonna be it for the Mega Church Dream game. As I said, uh, gonna be a short one, only six chapters because uh, Federations is next week. Um, I don't expect... Thanks, Odile the Great. Hopefully I'll see you again real soon, buddy. It's been a while since you've uh, popped in, so... I'll buy more often. Maybe next week for the update. Yes, I do... Ho I do... Uh, I intend... Sorry, I should, I should word this correctly. I intend to, and I would like to, stream on the Thursday for the Federation's launch. Uh, I don't know what I'll do, because it'll pro it will very likely just be the one night. We're not going to start a whole new game that I will continue for the next little while. Uh, after starting it, I might just, you know, check out some of the cool stuff that comes with Federations. Thanks for the stream, but I appreciate it, Darth Nierbork. Uh, feel free to uh, give me a follow and uh, pop in for some more streams in the future. Uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, uh, 7 o'clock Mountain Time. The Stellaris Console Edition is on the Tuesdays and the Fridays, guaranteed. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you later. Um, but yeah, I would like to check out the new stuff that Federations brings for sure, and it might I might just leave it at that, or even check out the new features that came with the update, and uh, it'll just be a kind of, you know, uh, a show-off kind of stream. I haven't done one of those in a while, where it's just a one-off, and, uh, you know, next time I'm free for regular stream scheduling, uh, where it's four times a week, then yeah, uh, we'll start a brand new stream game. Uh, making a new empire from scratch, as we always do, and uh, I look forward to that. Um, always fun catch on the next one. You, you too, Professor Payne. Have a good one, buddy. Um, apart from that, uh, I'm 100% certain that I will be streaming on Monday. We'll get the, another chapter of Mass Effect in, finishing up on Novaria, and uh, maybe doing a side mission after that. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I'm not expecting to uh, have another stream after that Mass Effect stream on Monday, but I would like to do a Federation's launch stream. And then I probably won't be able to for at least a week after that. That's that's my guess. But as all, as I keep saying, uh, stay, stay tuned via Twitter and in the Discord. I will keep you all updated there. Uh, in the meantime, um, thank you very much to everybody who came by and watched me playing this live tonight. JB, Semper Buffo, Elk, uh, Darth Nibork, Matt Morals, uh, there, there's a bunch there. I gotta go through this whole list. <laughs> Professor Payne and uh, Joda Frogman, Od Odile the Great. Uh, who am I missing? Blue Silver popped in for a little while there as well. Really appreciate it. Cyphus, good to see you again. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you uh, for a future stream uh, after we get the update and the new DLC. And I think that's everybody. Demi, Demi Noxious as well. I knew I was missing somebody. Um, so, yeah. 
huge thank you to those of you who came out came out to watch me playing this live. Those of you watching this in the future on YouTube, if you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below uh, what you're looking forward to with uh, the next stream game, and as well as the uh, Federation's DLC and being bumped up to version 2.8.3, uh, or sorry, 2.8.1, uh, with the next update coming to Stellaris Console Edition. Uh, I read all your comments and they help me out with the YouTube algorithm, so do leave one down below. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you wish to see more Stellaris Console Edition content, or if you just want to catch uh, some more of my uh, some more of my uh, streams uploaded to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. The goal for 2021 is to try to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of December. The best things you can do to help out are, of course, subscribe yourself and share this content with anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. If you have any friends or colleagues that are also interested in or play Solaris Console Edition, uh, send them my way. I will uh, do my best to keep them entertained. Scorpions806, how's it going? How are you doing in Colombia? We're just finishing up this stream tonight, bud, but I appreciate you popping in to uh, check out what's going on here. Um... Don't forget to check out the links in the description below. Uh, you'll find one for the official Stellaris Discord where you can become part of the greater Stellaris community. There's a big section for us console edition players uh, to talk about the game, ask questions, discuss strategies, and even set up multiplayer matches. Uh, it's a very large, very active community. So if you want to take part in the discussions that happen every day, uh, that's the place to be. There's also links down below to my own personal stuff. You'll find one to my Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Give me a follow there. The regular schedule is streaming four times a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Tuesdays and Fridays are guaranteed to be Solaris Console Edition, and I play other games on the Mondays and the Thursdays. Uh, so give me a follow on Twitch. Pop in during one of those four evenings. And, uh, you know, come chat with me for a couple hours. I will do my absolute best to keep you entertained uh, for the evening. There's also a link to my Twitter feed. Give me a follow there. It's a great way to keep in touch with me. And I po Ooh. Sorry about that. I, <laughs> I hit the button that launches, uh, launches uh, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> Anyways, um... There's also a link to my Twitter feed down below. Give me a follow there. It's a great way to keep in touch with me, and I post important announcements all the time. Uh, last but not least, there is a link to my own, own personal Discord. Uh, so if you would like to uh, have a direct avenue to uh, communicate with me on a daily basis, I do check that Discord all the time, or just to be a part of our little community that we are uh, slowly building up uh, as the weeks go by. Uh join join my personal discord we're almost at 200 members it would be awesome to see that uh happen this summer and uh yeah you can talk about whatever's on your mind there it doesn't have to be solaris console edition uh you know you can talk about you know what food did i cook today what other games did i pl did i play today uh, whatever's on your mind, it's all good. We also have some community events that occur there as well. Uh, there's an ongoing one for the rest of this year uh, where if you encounter something really cool or awesome or funny that happens in one of my streams or one of my videos, uh, you can submit uh, you can submit the video that it occurred in with a timestamp of where it was, and I'll take a clip of it and put it together in a compilation video. Uh, it'll basically be Moby's Best Moments of 2021, as chosen by you, the viewers. Uh, so if you want to take part in that. And uh, viewer polls in the future, where I post a list of games in my uh, Xbox and PlayStation libraries. And uh, you guys vote on which ones you want to see me play. The ones, that get the, the ones that get the most votes are the ones I wind up playing live on stream. So if you want to take part in any of that stuff, uh, join, join my Discord down below. Uh, all of those links are in the description, so check them out. I do hope to see you in one of those Discord channels or during one of the live streams. That would be awesome. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to call it an evening. I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday with more Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and I do hope to see you Thursday evening on June 17th uh, to celebrate the release of the 2.8.1 update to Stellaris Console Edition as well as the launch of the Federation's DLC. Uh, if not... I hope to see you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, so, I'm going to take off for now. Have a great weekend, and uh, take care. <laughs>